too much of your time this morning. I want us to go back to a portion of the scriptures that we looked at in March, and then we couldn't look at it again because um, we had our celebration. I mean, we had uh, Easter, we had so many things in the middle. But I want to get back to it today. The mountain of the house of the Lord. Everybody say the mountain of the house of the Lord. The mountain of the house of the Lord. How many of us remember the day I spoke about Psalm 24? Psalm 24. <coughs> and if you don't remember, we can go back there. If you want to remind yourself that you can go to our website, it is archived there. The mountain of the house of the Lord. So this will be the part two of the message. The, in the part one, uh, we see how God wants us to just pass through certain times so that we can get to where we are going to. And He wants us to just pass through. We are going to go a little bit deeper today. And I showed you the last time how all those that were critical in the things of the Spirit just passed through. But we are going to shift our thinking cap just a little bit and begin to refocus ourselves and see a new, another angle to this discussion. And I need you to look at me right now. Not at the paper. And look at your, take your pen. If you want, you can write things down. Because I assure you there will be a lot more than you have written in the papers. Psalm 24 says, The earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell in it. Let's read it together. Verse 2. For he had founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floors. I want to hear your voice. Verse 3. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? Verse 4. He was a clean hands and a pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul to vanity nor sworn deceitfully? Verse 5. He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the Lord of his salvation. Verse 6. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek your faith, O Jacob. Selah. Selah means stop. Yeah. Stop. Stop and think about what you have read. Stop and meditate on the implications of those words. And the implications of those words are myriads. They are massive. And as I sat down and I was thinking about it, the Lord just was taking me all over the place in the scriptures. And I have to be telling my soul, be still, be still, don't run too fast. This brain needs to catch up. To be able to understand what it is the spirit man is comprehending. And the question that the psalmist asks, who will have the capacity in this generation? Who will have the ability in this generation to ascend unto the hill of the Lord? So we are not talking about a dead interaction. We are talking about a living, active proposition. We are not talking about something that happened 6,000 years ago. God is talking about something that is happening now. Now. Who shall ascend? Who shall ascend? Who shall ascend? Meaning, there is the possibility of ascent. There is a grace for progress. There are certain things that God wants us to access in this our generation. And I pray that you will be a possessor of those things. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I said, who shall ascend unto the hills of the Lord? And immediately answered, he that has a clean hands. And I said, Lord, please explain this to me. What has our hands got to do with it? And he began to speak to my heart. And he gave me 
I thought I would be able to do it all. He gave me seven different angles to look at. Just the wrong of our hands in our ascent into the place of the dwelling of the most high. And I, my mind was totally blown. You know, I nearly shot the fuse because I have not, I have not comprehended it like that in the past. Oh, brothers and sisters, your hands must be clean now. He that has a clean hand is the one that would ascend unto the heel of the Lord. He that has a clean hand in this generation. In this adulterous generation. This is not about David. This is not about Solomon. This is not about an ancient temple that has become robbers. This is not about a, 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 a holy of holies that has ceased the existence. This is about a practical call of Jehovah to mankind to come into his presence today. Is that today is the day of salvation. He said, and if you will hear his voice today, harden not your heart. And he began to explain to me how this is critical. The first thing that we see in the scriptures about plants was in Genesis, I think chapter 3, in the Eden narrative. And you know the story best very well. God said concerning Adam and Eve, he said, now that man is like us, <laughs> now that man knows of the access to knowledge, <laughs> knowledge is not always wisdom. But that's not my point today. So let's be careful about knowledge. Wisdom is the capacity to live life in a meaningful format. Knowledge is accumulation of facts, and facts are not always true. So what are you talking about, Pastor Shire? Truth is value-driven. Facts is value-denuded. There's, there's, you know, facts is facts, some people will say. You don't want to live your life based on facts. You want the value of the spirit of grace to propel Adam got into a position where he could have access to any fact that he wants. See, this morning Kenichi was giving us facts, right? But those facts became value laden and set our hearts on fire. It, and then th at that point, it transitioned from being fact to being truth. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? It, it transitioned from being just a dry, value denuded uh, 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 analytics to becoming a, a tool of mission, to becoming an agent of passion, to becoming a thing that steers our heart and we say, how can we do better? How can we go further? Who shall ascend unto the hills of the Lord? Not those who live their life based on facts. But those who seek the truth of the word of God. Thou shalt know the truth. And the truth shall do what? It shall set you free, not facts. So God said, Adam now has the fact. Eve has the fact. But fact is going to drive his hand to do what will cause him to regret forever. May fact not cause you to make foolish mistakes in Jesus' name. Amen. Truth will guide your step. Truth will grace your life. Truth will give light to your path. Truth will give vision to your eyes. But fact without value, we destroy whoever is the owner of our fact. 